04 and a half to current Dodges with the standard shift transmission have the G56 uh, Mercedes transmission in them. Also with this transmission, they have what's called a dual mass flywheel. Now, the dual mass flywheel was born out of necessity. Uh, it is to quiet the sounds of the diesel engine. Uh, the dual mass flywheel was put in these trucks to make the trucks uh, more user friendly, I guess you could say. They're just quieter. Uh, people that have never had a diesel will, you know, can go out of a gas truck into a diesel and not experience the diesel noise uh, and things of that nature. Well, the problem with the dual mass flywheel is, is they're prone to failures, uh, especially if you're towing. If you do any type of performance upgrades to the truck, uh, the dual mass flywheel just does not work. It's probably one of the most common failures that we deal with around here. And clutches are one of the biggest product lines that we sell. Uh, today, we're going to be installing a Volare Street Dual Disc Clutch on our 2010 Dodge 3500 truck. Now, when you say the word dual disc, people automatically get nervous. Well, I don't need a dual disc. I'm not uh, sled pulling. Well, now the clutch manufacturers have designed a finger style dual disc that are actually smoother engagement and have better manners inside of the truck than some of your more aggressive single discs do. And they'll hold more horsepower in certain applications. So this is the Belair G56 Street Dual Disc Kit. I'm gonna go over everything that, we, that comes in the kit for you. Uh, and I'm also gonna assemble this clutch to show you how it's assembled when it's out here on the table and you can see it actually happening. Inside your kit, you're gonna receive a hydraulic upgrade this is the master and the slave cylinder combined. They're already filled with fluid and pre-bled. It's ready to drop in the truck. Inside your kit, you'll receive a hardware bag with new crank bolts and pressure plate bolts. You'll receive your alignment tool and throwout bearing. Now this is your pivot bearing arm that goes on the pivot ball. Uh, this is your throwout bearing arm, I'm sorry, that goes on your pivot ball. Uh, you will receive this in the kit new as well. You receive a new flywheel in this kit and a new pilot bearing. You will receive, obviously, two clutch discs, a separator, separator plate for the clutch disc, and a pressure plate. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to assemble this clutch real quick for you so you can see this done out on the table. Uh, your clutch discs are two different clutch discs, uh, and I'm gonna show that to you. They are marked as to how their orientation is. You can see these have got stickers on. This is the flywheel side and this is the pressure plate side disc. Now these two discs are different because one of the discs will be recessed to where the other clutch disc can fit into it in the assembly like this right here. Here's your recess on this disc. The flywheel disc will make right into it. Now if you were to pull this transmission apart and had to do something to the clutch head to reassemble it, your stickers are going to be gone. Um, when you assemble the when you assemble this kit, you always want to remember that the raised surface of the clutch or the spline hub always points towards the transmission. Okay, your flat-sided clutch will be against the flywheel. Your recessed side will be on top towards the pressure plate, but the raised surface will always face towards the transmission. So well, let's assemble this clutch to show basically how it works. You've got your first disc. It goes in your flywheel. These flywheels will be marked with painted surface. It'll be on the separator plate, the flywheel, and the pressure plate. You want to assemble it with all of the painted surfaces going the same direction. Okay, there's our separator. And now our top disc goes right in. It'll fit over the recessed end of the other disc. And your pressure plate. That's an assembled clutch. This is a finger style clutch, uh, and this is what gives the clutch its very, uh, very good streetability, very smooth engagement. You'll notice this if you've ever installed a single disc clutch, that's probably be a red flag to you. This looks like a single disc pressure plate, uh, but this is, this is designed to hold the, uh, hold the dual disc. Now in this video, we're gonna go over everything Removing the G56 transmission from this truck, uh, from what you have to do 
on the inside to get your get your stick shift out, transfer case removal, drive shaft removal, the whole sheet mask. This is going to be a long video, but this is one of the most popular products that we've got on our website. Probably something that we sell yeah, several of every day. So let's get started. Okay, first step in removing the G56 transmission from from these trucks is to get the stick shift out of the interior. Now, where this is a 2010 truck, um, our cup holder console here is going to be come out in two pieces. Uh, the first two bolts that you're going to want to attack are both metric eights, and the first one will be here underneath what would have been where a standard shift transfer case would have been. There's the metric eight bolt down in this hole and then underneath of this cup holder here there is another metric 8 bolt down inside that bore there okay we're going to remove these two bolts and get the first section of this console out our first console piece is unbolted and it will lift straight out now your bolts will stay in there so watch for those now we're going to remove the top half of the shifter um, just to, for ease of getting the second part of our console out. On our shifter boot, just grab it, simply grab it from the back and lift straight up on it. It'll come out. It's got two, uh, two tabs on the front there. Then to access the two 13 metric nuts that hold the shifter, the top shifter half on, you just slide this boot down and then remove the nuts. Then remove the shifter. All right. All right. On the second half, to remove the second half of our console here, you've got two metric eight bolts that'll have to be removed still. Then the front half of the console just lift out and over the boot. Now we're going to go after our air vent, connecting our back uh, passenger vents here. This is a mag cap, so we've got the vents in the back at the bottom of the console. So to remove this, you simply disengage the connector, just slide it straight back, and then you just lift up on the air connection and slide it right out. Good. Now we're going to remove our dust cover for the transmission. It's on the interior here. This is our, our last thing. This is also held down by metric 8 bolts. Uh, there's six of them. There's two here at the bottom. If you move your carpet back, your, your, uh, your sound carpet back here, just move it back just a little bit. You've got two at the bottom, two on the sides, and then you'll have two at the very front. Now this is a two-piece uh, dust cover. You've got a hard plastic cover that holds the actual rubber dust cover down. They'll come out as one unit. You'll pull both of them. You'll make sure that when you start to lift, you want to lift on not only the, the black plastic hold down, but the dust cover underneath of it as well. Okay, we're going to show you how the dust cover comes out of here. Just simply move your carpet back and make sure that you're grabbing underneath of the rubber dust cover and lift it all out as one assembly. Pulling straight up. See, this is a two piece dust cover here. All right, and now the top portion of our shifter. It has four bolts that attach it, and they are external torxes. They are E12s. We're going to remove it now. That's okay. The G56 shifter has two alignment dowels on these 
these two corners right here. So removing it, you just kind of want to give it just a soft tap, just to dislodge everything. Make sure the transmission's in neutral and just lift the shifter straight out. All right. Now we're going to begin moving the, the removing the drive shafts from the truck. Uh, before we remove any drive shafts, we go through and mark drive shafts. Make sure we get everything lined up and we go back just to keep drive shafts in phase. Your rear drive shaft is 15 metric. We need to put some power tools in this operation, what we need. Yeah. Either that or we need suspenders, blue britches, beards, and straw hats. <laughs> That's right. Blue britches. <laughs> yeah, let's get some power tools in this operation. Remove the drive shaft from the yoke, just slide it forward into the transfer case. Then to remove the front from the transfer case, slide it directly back. Your, four, your front drive shaft has four T40 bolts against the axle yoke, against the front axle yoke, and then four 16 metric bolts on the back. What we found to get the Torx T40s out of the front drive shaft is the cra Craftsman has a T40 Torx that's got a neck down on it where it's 3 8 drive and it'll fit in the drive shaft there just perfectly to get on that T40. And then you can use an extension and a power tool. You don't want to round these off uh, where they're Torxes. So we break these loose by hand first to make sure that we've got good engagement of the, of the Torx bit and we're not rounding. So we've already got these loose so we can come back in with the, with the impact gun and get them out. Now we're removing the front drive shaft. And again, before removing the shaft, we wanna mark the shaft. So when we go back, we keep everything in phase kind of everything in balance. Now, when you're removing the front drive shaft, the rear bolts are 16 metric. The front bolts are T40 torxes. Now, in T40 torxes, what we found is the Craftsman has a 3 8 drive T40 that's neck down. It's smaller at the top than it is at the bottom. And what that'll allow you to do is when you go in to get these bolts, that'll allow that socket to go in there just perfectly. Now when you go to break the T40s loose, your front ones, you'll want to loosen them by hand to make sure that you're not rounding them off because it's very important not to round these off and it's very easy to do. Rounding them off is very easy to do. So you want to get them started by hand. Then you can come back with your impactor. On the rear bolts we remove these four metric 16s first and drop the drive shaft and let it sit on the cross member that way we can move the drive shaft around if we need to to get to our t40s we got our four metric 16s out in the back now we're going to do our t40 torxes in the front being very careful not to round them off Soft face hammer. Yep. 
You know, you'll get your crowd bar out too. Right. Front drive shaft loose and transfer case in neutral. Swing around and get our last bolt. Soft face hammer. Oh. All right. Here. Shift out. And while you got your drive shafts out, this is a good time to go through all your new joints. Make sure there's you don't have anything that's very loose or has a rough spot in it. That'll cause vibrations that will absolutely drive you crazy. Not being able to figure it out. A lot of people check U joints while they're on the truck, and that's okay if you spun a cap or something like that and you've had a needle bearing fall out. Now we're going to disconnect our electrical connector and our vent tube from the transfer case. This is an automatic electric case. You're just going to have an electrical connector right here. Just going to have a push tab on it. You just simply push the tab in, wiggle it, get it out of your way. And then your vent tube from the transfer case will just have a Metal clamp on it, pair of needle nose pliers, compress the clamp, you can move it back to where you can remove the hose. Just pull straight back on the hose, and that removes it. Now, you have six 14 metric nuts that hold the transfer case on. There's three on this side, and there's three on the passenger side. We're going to loosen those, leave two of them on, and then we're going to remove the transfer case. In loosening the transfer case, you'll want to make sure that not only a long wrench you take, but you also have a stubby 14 with you as well. Uh, the pasture side gets a little bit tight. Now we're going to remove the transfer case. Once you have all six of your nuts off of the case, unbolt it from the transmission, and just simply move the transfer case back and forth to break the seal, and then come straight back. set your case down you want to make sure that you put your output shaft you don't want it to fall down because it'll let all your fluid out Good. before we put our transmission jack underneath the transmission and get a cross member out we're gonna go ahead and, and unhook our wiring harness here from the transmission uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our slave cylinder out this is a 13 metric nut on this and you just simply remove it Remove the hydraulic assembly here, the slave cylinder from the side of the transmission. You simply pull straight back, and arm and all will come out. In unhooking our sensors there, the, this is actually a reverse switch. The two tabs on it, we actually, what we had to do was use a pair of needle nose pliers to engage that, and then just pull straight back on it, and it'll come right out. Okay, now we're gonna go back around our wiring harness here. <coughs> and get uh, all of the clips out of not only the transmission but also around the cross member. And just trace this wiring loom all the way around and make sure that you get everything.
passenger side of the transmission, you want to unhook your exhaust back pressure lines. Both the rubber lines have metal clips on them. Pedro needle nose pliers. We'll disengage that. down. Then there's an electrical connector on the side. EVP sensor. Okay. All right, now that we've got the back pressure sensor undone, you've got the wiring harness going to it. It's got one clip on the transmission. That has to come loose. wiring harness free. Now you'll just want to feel with your hands. Make sure nothing else is connected to the top of the transmission. There's another EVP line or the line that goes over to the to the O2 sensor for the primary kit there. But it's not attached to anything so we're good to go. We're gonna get our transmission jack underneath of here and get the cross member out and bring the transmission down. We've got a transmission jack strapped on. Uh, your chains, when you run them, you want to be aware of where your sensors are. Make sure that you don't bust any sensors or over tighten something and crack the bell housing or anything like that. There's a actually a standard here on the back that you can use to put a chain through. We usually use it. Make sure your wiring harness and everything's clear so we're clear to drop the transmission. Now we have to get the cross member out. There's three metric 15 nuts on the bottom of this. On the transmission support, we drop those. And then you have four bolts on either side of the cross member, and they are metric 18s on the back side and 21 on the front side. Drive your bolts out. get the cross member out, what you'll want to do is you'll kind of just want to work it where you can get some daylight on one side and bring it right straight out. Your bell housing bolts, you're now to your bell housing bolts and you're ready to remove the transmission. Your bell housing bolts are 14 metric. There's eight of them. There's three on the bottom and there's one on top on both sides, both driver and passenger. Same on both sides. We loosen them up by hand before we go in with impacts to make sure that we don't round anything. We throw wrenches, <laughs> we laugh, we joke.
cuss a little bit if we have to. Hopefully sometimes we don't have to cuss. I'm probably right against the bell housing too. So we should get a long extension bar and get ready for 14s. Once you've hand loosened all of your bell housing bolts, this tool right here will make your life 100% easier. This is just a 14 metric swivel head socket. You can use a regular 14 metric socket and a universal if you've got it, and a long extension bar. And this will make you twice as fast getting to your bell housing bolts. You can get away from the transmission jack and get where you're comfortable be able to loosen them. All right, we've got all of our bell housing bolts out, so now we're going to drop the transmission. Everything on the transmission jack is secured. First step, what we'll do is we'll just basically wiggle it back and forth just to get it loose. Everything loose in the supply lines there. And that'll usually get you a gap between the bell housing and the engine. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to give it just a little bit. This is very important. This is just real light here. So you don't want to mar anything up. We're just going to give it a little bit on the prize bar just to kind of get it started back. Both sides at the same time. Now you've got an exhaust hanger on this side, on the passenger side. What you'll want to do is you'll want to basically turn it all the way around and get it out of your way. And that'll let your transmission go straight back. It's right there. What we're doing is we're just guiding the transmission back. We're giving it down a little bit to kind of clear a floor plant, floor, floor pan, and straight on back. Watching our wiring harness. And once we're clear of the clutch, we're going to go straight down with it. Okay, now we're going to remove our stock clutch and flywheel. We're going to start off by removing the pressure plate. There's eight 3 8 standard bolts that hold it down. Two, 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 and two. We're going to start removing them and we're going to do it uh, opposite corners here so the pressure leaves off at the same time. You can see the clutch material falling out of here. This clutch has already been slipping. Once I've got the pressure off the pressure plate, I'm going to remove two sets of bolts completely. And I'm going to leave 
leave a top bolt uh, in it so it don't swing away. And we'll remove the rest of the bolts. When you clutch disc and your pressure plate will come down all in one shot. You just want to support the bottom of the whole assembly. Once I've got my last bolt out and got it supported, I'll slip my fingers behind it and drop the pressure plate and clutch on one shot. You can kind of see on this clutch the glazing where it's already starting to slip. marks on the pressure plate from the slippage. This is the dual mass flywheel. Uh, this is the this is the problem child right here. You can see on this surface on the on the the grabbing surface of the uh, of the of the flywheel, you can see the heat spots in it where the clutch has been slipping. Um, when you first look at this, you're like, your first thing you're gonna think to yourself is, how am I gonna get to the crank bolts? Well, we've got to disassemble the dual mass flywheel. On the back side of the engine, there's an inspection plate. Now, to access the, the bolts holding the flywheel, the front part of the dual mass flywheel, on the Cummins engine, you're going to have an inspection plate held on by two 10 metric bolts. The top one, you'll simply loosen. about two turns and the bottom one you loosen okay when you loosen that that lets the inspection window come around and you'll see two holes the two holes are for the barring tool to turn the engine over which most of you aren't going to have that so you'll have to turn the crank by uh, by just getting a prize bar in here and turning the, the crank over and the second one is to access your bolts. So this is your access window that we showed you how to drop the plate off of. Um, this is for a barring tool. This is a Cummins barring tool. It actually goes in this lower hole here and that's used to bar the motor over so you can get access to the, access to the bolts. Then the bolts are in this window right here. These are metric 15s, okay? And what you'll do is there's eight of them in total. You're gonna to remove all eight of these bolts to pull off the front side of the dual mass flywheel. Now, you guys probably aren't gonna have a barring tool at home. We're gonna show you how to bar the motor over without using the barring tool, the safest way to do it. Now, since you're not gonna have a barring tool at home, the best way to bar this motor over, uh, since it's going to be up there, you, if you're still up top, you can turn it over with the alternator. That'll work just fine. That'll probably be a little bit better, but with it up in the air, you're not having a barring tool. If you run a bolt into the bell housing here, and then just get a small prize bar and get right on the ring gear, there's not a lot of pressure on the motor. That'll allow you to turn the motor over to gain access to the other bolts. Now, as you take your last bolt out, the eighth bolt, you want to make sure that you've got support on the front of this so it don't come down and hit you in your head. All right, the front assembly here just comes right down. And that leaves us with our back spacer. Take your crank bolts out. Take your spacer, your spacer ring out. 
and you're done. This what's bolted to our crank here is kind of a, I guess for lack of a better word, it's a flex plate. It's actually what holds the entire dual mass flywheel onto the crank and it's supported out here. So these are 18 metrics here. We're gonna go ahead and remove them. Support this as you take your last one out. There you go. Okay, we're going to be installing our flywheel now for our dual, uh, for our street dual disc clutch. Before you go back with your flywheel, the first thing that you want to do is you want to look for uh, real rear main seal leaks. Make sure you don't have any oil or anything like that. Uh, if you do, you're already here, you might as well go ahead and pull it down and put a rear main in the truck. Not that, not that difficult to do. So everything on this truck is clean. Now, when you bolt your flywheel up on this, you're going back to bare crank. You don't want to use any of the flywheel spacers or anything that was with the dual mass clutch. You want it to go to bare crank. So we're going to set our flywheel up here now and install our flywheel bolts. And we'll torque those to 102 foot-pounds. All right, our flywheel bolts are 18 metrics, and we've put some red lock tight on each bolt. And we're going to torque these to 102 foot pounds again in a crisscross pattern. Now when you're torquing them, you'll have to have somebody to hold the flywheel for you. Now you want to go back through each one of these to make sure you're good. Okay, now it's time to start putting our uh, clutches and our separator plate and our pressure plate up there. What we like to do is we'll come in and put our clutch discs together. First thing you do is take your stickers off the faces of the clutches and remember their orientation. This is pressure plate side, so this is our outside disc. So we'll take it and then our separator plate. And then what we'll do is keep pressure on so you don't warp the clutch discs. And then go ahead and lay your flywheel side on top and assemble everything. 
and make sure that it goes together nice and flat. And then we just put it inside the flywheel with the painted marks of our separator plate going to the right side. Make sure everything fits together nice and smooth. Now you'll push your alignment tool in to make sure that it's got good engagement on your pilot bearing. And this is kind of where it takes the second person. You don't want to leave this hanging up there. So what we're going to do, and you're not going to get to see it in the video now, is we're going to have a second guy come in, lay our pressure plate up here, and get the bolt started on it. Our Valera pressure plate, you'll have two studs that are screwed in the flywheel and they'll take 9 16 nuts and lock washers. You don't have to use any Loctite on any of these because you are using lock washers. So now that we've got our pressure plate up, we're just going to kind of snug these up by hand and then we're going to remove our alignment tool before it gets too tight on us. Go. When you go start torquing your pressure blade, and I'm going to show you this as I torque this down, Adam's going to focus in on this. As we go, we're going to 44 foot pounds here. We're using two different sizes. You've got the two 9 16 nuts on here, then the 3 8 12 point drive bolts. So you've got, you'll have to do some changing inside your torque crash. But what I like to do when I'm torquing pressure plate down is I try to go as even as I can with the fingers. So when I start pulling it down, once I start to see movement in the fingers, I'll usually switch to the opposite side. And then I'll try to go opposite of it. So you can see these fingers are starting to draw in. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the, uh, the opposite side down just about even with it. Then I'm gonna switch socket sizes and I'm gonna go out to the 12.38. I'm going to go to the opposite corner and I'm going to draw it down even as well. That way we bring the pressure plate in good and even. You don't have to worry about any broken fingers or anything like that. And don't go too much on one side before you start drawing on the other one. Just keep everything nice and even. Now, we want to take a pressure plate down to 44 foot-pounds. And again, we're going to go in a crisscross pattern, making sure that our fingers are drawn up even so we don't have any problems. and we'll end out on our 9 sixteenths. Now that you've got your fresh plate all the way torqued down, you can go across your, the uh, fingers of the pressure plate, make sure everything drew down nice and even, and kind of visually inspect, make sure you don't have any clutches pinched or anything like that. Nothing pinched, everything's flat, all your lock washers are flat. 
Okay, make sure you remove your barring tool and you're ready to do the outside of your transmission. While you're here, go ahead and put your inspection window back up too and tighten it back down. Okay, now we're gonna remove our throw out bearing and our clutch fork from our transmission and we're gonna get everything cleaned up before we go back. Uh, it's very important when you're going with this, when you're removing your clutch fork, is watch this retaining spring that goes over the pivot ball. You don't wanna, you don't wanna break that. And then pull your throw out bearing right off the input shaft. You'll kind of want to watch your orientation, how it goes back. Your pivot ball side is usually your taller side here. This this rise will be just a little bit taller. So we just want to pull this off. Now with your dual disc clutch, there's a spacer behind this pivot ball. So we have to remove this washer from behind here before going with our new one. We're going to do that before we start cleaning up our transmission. And this aluminum bell housing is very delicate. So as you're removing this, this is a three quarter inch, six point. When you're removing this, be very, very careful because you can, if it's in a bind or if somebody's worked on it before you and it's cross threaded, you can break it off really, really easy. So just pay attention not to put too much pressure on it. Just loosen it up. On bolt. Here's your washer. Just remove the washer from the back of it. Put the pivot ball right back in. Make sure there's no dirt or anything behind it. And you just simply want to snug this down. Again, don't break this off in the bell housing. This is a very important step for the release of the clutch. Make sure that you get that washer out from behind the pivot ball. Now we're gonna clean up the inside of this transmission, paying attention to clean, cleaning up where our, our throw out bearing is gonna slide, and then we're gonna start reinstalling our new bearing. Before you install your new throw out bearing, you're gonna to wanna to grease the input shaft retainer very lightly. This just helps your throw out bearing to slide on the shaft here. We've got our shaft cleaned up real good. You wanna make sure that you don't get any grease on your input shaft, because that will sling out on the clutch and it will cause you all kinds of problems later on down the road. We're gonna assemble our new clutch fork now. If we've removed our spring from our old clutch fork, uh, this clutch fork is actually painted with white to show you the pivot ball side. Again, it's got the higher side raise goes towards the pivot ball. You want to reinstall your spring here and you want to get it around on the back side to make sure that the spring is up on the lands. Simply turn it facing up like this. Okay. Now our throw out bearing, you can kind of look at our, your old throw out bearing to see how they're oriented. See, it's got the little pigtail curly cues towards the pivot ball. So when it slides in, it'll just slide in, and these ears here will engage the clutch fork. Just like so. Clean the grease off of it so you don't have grease slung up onto your clutch disc. We're going to install our clutch fork now with our new release bearing. You want to check your pivot ball and make sure it's round. Uh, in your Valeria instructions, they'll have the part number for these from the Dodge house. If it's not round, replace it. It's less than a $10 part. We applied a little bit of grease on our input shaft collar here, just a little bit. Didn't get any on our splines. We'll throw up on the disc. And we're going to put our throw out bearing in now. Just slide it right over the collar. Make sure it slides free. And when you go to install it on your pivot ball, your new retaining clip, you just push it right straight back. If you need a new retaining clip, you can get that from the Dodge House 2. Part numbers are in your instructions. Just make sure she slides real free, doesn't bind or have any contact, that you've got any grease on your shaft, and check make sure the inside of where your slave cylinder is going to connect, that you don't have anything that's going to hinder your 
engagement of your slave. A couple things before we install our transmission here. Um, the G56 transmission is known for gear rollover noise. What we suggest you do with that, um, because this is an aluminum case transmission, the sound is going to resonate on it. It's going to be a lot louder, and this is a loud transmission anyway. Um, filling it with mobile Delvac uh, synthetic transmission fluid 50. Uh, you'll have six quarts to fill it up to the fill hole, and then an additional one quart is what's suggested by Valair. Uh, this is actually what you will find in this transmission in your deuce and a half application in your bigger trucks. They had the the, uh, the uh, mobile Delvac 50 transmission fluid in. So we've already done that on this transmission and I already got it filled and ready to go back. Before we install this transmission, we go to the first rail here and we enga engage this first gear. And what that helps us do is that'll allow us to turn the transmission by the rear output shaft so when we go to stab it, we can get our clutch disc lined up better. So this will help us with engagement into the clutch disc. And when you go to grab this gear, what you'll want to do is you'll want to grab your input shaft with a clean hand and make sure that you're stopping it so you're one-to-one -one on your engagement there. So that's got us ready to go in. So we're prepped, transmission's filled, ready to go. No grease on our clutch, on our input shaft splines. Get one more once over on our throwout bearing and we're ready to go. Make sure you double check all this stuff before you go back because this is a one and done deal. You don't want to have to pull this transmission back out over something silly. Okay, when, when you start back up with your transmission, first off, the main thing that you want to do, because you're going to be bumping around in here, most of, these, most of these trucks are going to have dirt and some cow dung if you're from around in these parts. So first thing that we do is we take rag here and put it top transmission so we don't get any dirt down in, into, our, into our, our transmission case. And as you start up with it, you know, you're going to have your wiring here. Your wiring on this G56, this loom that goes back across to all your to all your, uh, your DPF controls and whatnot, they will go underneath of the transmission as you're coming up. So they'll simply loop underneath. Uh, and you've got two sensors on this side. This one's for the transfer case. This is for a reverse switch. So make sure that they stay on this side. Then you'll have your electronic sensor for your EBP valve, your EBP sensor will stay over here and you'll want to pay attention to your exhaust back pressure lines as well. Now, going up with it, while you're down here eye level with it, this is the best time to get your left and your right uh, set up and your transfer, your uh, transmission uh, up and down the flatness with the engine. You'll want to set that while you're here too. As you're going up with it, um, if your, your floor plan allow you to clear, there's no exact science to this. The, the only exact science to it um, is do not pull this transmission up to the bell housing with the bell housing bolts. Do not do that. As you're going up with it, and we'll show you this as we get it up here and kind of get everything out of our way, and as we go to stab it or get the transmission line with clutch spines and the, and the pilot bearing. As we're going up here, we just want to make sure that all of our wires are cleared, where they're supposed to be, that we don't have anything pinched, Pay attention to your breather tube for your transmission, for your transfer case, because it's got one tab that goes on a bell housing bolt up here. And you just want to go up with it easy, take your time, and get everything lined up. And you're also going to have a hanger on that exhaust over here on your right-hand side, on your passenger side. It's going to be a, a nightmare, too. So we're going to start up with our transmission and try to show you as many tips as we can going up with it. When you're going back with your transmission on a truck with a stock diesel particulate filter system on, this hanger on the passenger side can be a nightmare getting the transmission in. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to pull the back end of the transmission over towards the driver's side and that'll get you a little bit of relief from this pipe. So you'll kind of come in to the clutch assembly at an angle. You're not going to engage the clutch disc, you're just going to be engaging the input shaft to the inside of the uh, fingers of the of the pressure plate to get you past this. Now you can put a prize bar against this to give you a little bit of relief, just pushing it towards the passenger side and that will get you around this hanger. But this hanger is gonna give you the most trouble for sure. So now we've got our transmission in and we wanna make sure that we pay attention to our gap at the top and bottom 
to make sure that we're same. So we've got everything leveled up right here and we're just about to start to push on it. We are engaged in the clutch discs because you can grab your output shaft here and only move it just a little bit. So that means you're engaged in your clutch discs. So now you just want to take it up as gently as you can, just pushing on it just a little bit until she gets flush with the bell housing. At this point right here, we've got our transmission went smooth into the clutch, engaged very well. You've got two dowels on here on the transmission and on the opposite side, the exact same place. As you're going up now, what you'll want to make sure of, what you want to be very, very careful of is that you get the dowels aligned with the bell housing correctly to finish up the mating. We almost have our, our transmission completely flush against the bell housing. This is about the last uh, little bit of daylight you're going to see here. Right now, we're to the point where we've got to get our dowel pins aligned. Now these dowel pins, you have one on both sides of the transmission. They're just underneath of the, the driver's side one is just underneath of the starter and just, and then the just mirror image on the other side of the transmission is the other one. You want to make sure you go all the way across your bell housing, make sure you don't have any wires or any breather tubes or anything like that pinched. And now you'll want to align the dowel before you go back up with the transmission. So we're going to do that with our transmission jack. We're just going to give it a little bit of left or right, whatever we need. This needs to, this one needs to go up just a fuzz and then we'll have it in there. And then we're going to start putting bell housing bolts in. We've got our transmission installed now. Everything's up flush. We've got a couple bolts in just to hold hold the transmission up. Uh, it should look like this right here. The transmission should be flush to the back part of the engine. Should be no gap. Uh, you remember when you were going up on your dowels, make sure none of your dowels uh, were creeled or anything. And this takes a little bit of time when you're doing that. You you just have to take your time, work around it because you don't want to you don't want to to break an engine backing plate or bust bell housing. That's what you get when you try to draw these transmissions up with the with the bell housing bolts. So now with our transmission still on the jack, with still on the jack, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install all eight of our metric 14 bolts around the bell housing, making sure to get this wiring loom has a clip that will attach. And also on our exhaust side here, we'll have a bracket that will attach as well making sure to go back with all of those. Then once we've done this, we're actually going to remove our transmission jack and put our cross member in. But now first we're gonna get our bell housing bolts in. Now we're gonna install our transmission cross brace. Um, the longer side of the transmission cross brace always goes on the driver's side. When you go to put it in, it goes right back out just like you all saw it come out the way it swung out. Passenger side stayed in, stayed tight. Make sure your wiring harness clears here. It lines up with your holes on your transmission brace. And up till your bolt holes line up. We suggest using a lineup tool to do this. Do not use your bolts. Tighten up your transmission cross member bolts, 18 and a 21 metric, 21 on your back side. Transmission mount. Now we're going to remove our transmission jack. Now we've we're going back with our electrical connectors on transmission. We've got our transmission jack out, so it just made these a little bit easier to get to. Both of our exhaust back pressure lines, and then the electrical connector on our EVP sensor. Then our reverse switch on the transmission, which is here. And that leaves us with our connections for our uh, transfer case. 
Went back in all the stock locations with our push pins. Everything's back nice and neat out of the way. Hello. Double check everything. All right, now we're going to install our transfer case back onto our transmission. This is a really good time while you've got the transfer case down uh, to check to see if your output shaft seal is leaking. A lot of times, this is a real common failure on these trucks. You'll see a lot of splatter against the top of the truck if the, if the tail shaft seal is leaking. This is just a pop out seal here. You can pop it out and replace it real easy. This one's fine, so we're going to go ahead and set this transfer case back in. Put these transfer cases in. This is a two man job. Don't try to do this by yourself because once you get it up and get it on the splines, uh, it'll take a little bit of finagling to get it back up on the shaft. So when you get a helper, go ahead and install your transfer case. Okay, we've got our six uh, metric 14 nuts tied on our transfer case. Everything's good to go there. So we've got two connections, two electrical connect or one electrical connection left, and then the vent tube. Uh, where this transfer case again is a automatic electronic case. We've just got one electronic connection. Just push it till it clicks like that. And then we've got our vent tube. It just goes on the transfer case like this. And we slide the clamp over, and that's got that done. Now we're going to install our drive shafts on our 2010 Dodge. Again, on drive shafts, before you install them, you want to check all your U-joints. Make sure your U-joints are solid. If any need to be replaced, we suggest replacing them before going back. Uh, we're going to install our front drive shaft first. We're going to attach it to our front differential first and then attach to our transfer case because the transfer case is in neutral so it'll still turn. So that'll give us the actuation to line it up. We painted our shaft, so we're going to go right back against our paint marks and on our hardware, on our bolts, we're going to lock tight our bolts before we reinstall them. They're locked tighter from the factory, so we're going to lock tight them back before we reinstall. We're getting ready to reinstall our rear drive shaft. On our rear drive shaft bolts, uh, Dodge uses a ton of Loctite on these, and we're going to use Loctite when we go back. But I suggest going through your, uh, your rear differential and uh, rechasing these threads on the rear diff here. This is 12 by 1.75 pitch thread. Uh, we just use a regular re-threader and go back in, chase these holes real good, clean them out, and then we're going to chase the bolts too and get them cleaned up as well before we put new Loctite on and reinstall them. Definitely suggest doing this. All right, we've got our holes uh, cleaned out on our, our rear differential. We're going to install our rear drive shaft now. First off, you want to take your drive shaft and make sure there's no debris in it on the transfer case in, nothing that's going to slide up in there. And you want to install your transfer case in first. And slide it right onto the splines. And go right up the shaft. Now with the transmission in neutral, we can turn our shaft to align our paint. Our four 15 metric bolts, remember, we use Loctite on these. And this will install our rear drive shaft. We're kind of, we're going to start removing our old hydraulic assembly now because with this kit you receive a new hydraulic assembly. And we're removing the old hydraulic assembly. Going along the bottom of the cab here, there's about three clips that hold the hydraulic line going to the master cylinder up on the firewall to the bottom of the cab here. So what we do is we go through with a little interior clip removal tool and just pop it loose from the bottom of the cab. And what that's gonna let us do is once we get that all the way loose from the bottom of the cab, we'll just bring the line out and towards us. And when we drop the entire assembly out, we're just going to drop it right out the bottom, right over here on the driver's side of the engine compartment. So we're going to go ahead and start getting these clips undone. All right, we're doing our interior assembly now. We're going to put our shift, uh, our shift fork in first, our shifter assembly. We use uh, this Mopar gasket maker. It's for aluminum. Uh, your shifter has an aluminum base on it. Your transmission has aluminum as well. This is just to keep you from having any oil to sling out of the transmission.
And when you're installing your shifter here, you've got two dowels in your top left and bottom right hand corner. They're just alignment dowels. You just get them started down. Gotta get them started with your hand. With your E12, you'll start taking down your your bolts, and you want to start on the dial sides and pull them down evenly. All right, we've got our dust cover here for our transmission. Uh, again, this is in two pieces, so you'll want to fit these together, and then throw a couple bolts in it just to hold it before you put it down. That'll keep your bottom half of this aligned while you're getting it in the carpet here. You just kind of have to work your hands around it and work the bottom part of that dust boot around the transmission. Just the shift tower. And if you've got it incorrectly, that should line all six of your bolt holes back up. Just pull your sound dampening carpet away. Now we'll put the rest of our bolts in. We're gonna check our gear shift to make sure it's free before we finalize this. Back and forth is good. We're good to go there. Everything's tight. All right, now our air damper. All right, now we wanna place our, our uh, air damper in here. This goes to our, our rear vents. And you wanna start it in the front first. Just slides right over. Same in the rear. Slides right back in and it goes right over top of a stud right there. Then you slide this connection up to finish it. Alright, now the front side piece for our console. It goes down with the front down. There's locking tabs in the front here and here. Slide into those locking tabs and down, and that should line you up with two holes here in the bottom, like so. Give this a once over to kind of clean everything up. Bend down our backside. Okay, now for the back side of our console. And it's basically the same way. You've got a couple of locking tabs on the front of it, so it wants to go down. Front end down first. Pass. Now our bolts, we just left them, they're already in the cups here, so locks into place right there and that should put you right in place on your back two bolts all right now we're going to install our shifter again 
just move your bottom boot down to access the bottom portion of the shifter. Put your two nuts on after you've lined everything up. Now we tighten up our 13 metric nuts. You want to make sure not to pinch the boot. Now just pull your lower boot back up. Push your upper dust cover down. And it's got two locking tabs in the front and then two push tabs in the back so you'll search your front first and push straight down on the back. There is your shifter installed. Two cups to cover up our holes in our console. Push both of those down and we are done. Now it's on to the hydraulic assembly. You have to remove your neutral safety switch from your old clutch assembly, from your master cylinder assembly here, the, actually from the rod that goes inside of the cab. To remove it, at the bottom of it, two plastic tabs right here. Just push those together and slide this keeper up and out. Then you just simply push on the top of the switch and that will release the spring loaded side. Then push from the bottom. There's the entire switch. This grommet, this foam grommet, this rolls over. This plastic one does not. So you put your foam grommet back on your new assembly and your spring will engage right here on this shoulder. So when you go to put your new switch on, you want to start with it low to make sure that your spring assembly engages there. Pop everything back into place and replace your cover. There's your neutral safety switch. Now that we've got our safety switch installed, we're just going to give you a little tip here to make this easier on you. Uh, Valera's hydraulic assembly that they send you does not come with the, the metal bracket. This metal bracket inside the cab is held on by two 15 metric nuts. It's right through the firewall and it's, it's right where we unhooked our, our old assembly. It will be easier on you to go ahead and take this bracket off the firewall and assemble it onto the master cylinder before you put it in the truck. And just, just trust me on this one. There's only one way that this goes, and there's two washers on here. There's a thin one and there's a thick rubber washer. You just want to make sure that this is tight. Okay, that's the key. It's making sure it's tight. And it only goes on here one way. All it's got four ears on it and you can try it all four different ways, but you'll see that only three ears will be on. And there's the fourth way, and that's the only way it goes. So just turn to lock this in place. That's correct. Alright, so we've got that started. Now we're going to go ahead and drop this in the truck. Now, we'll finish locking this into place once we get it in, inside the vehicle. Okay, we'll start by fishing our, our slave cylinder down, going towards the transmission. It will go between your brake blocks, your brake box and your steering shaft here. And then to the outside of the frame rail. Be very careful of the starter, because you got metal parts on here. So, you keep the hydraulic line down. The bottom portion of your hydraulic line down. Now, before you go to fishing too much here, you'll want to start your connecting rod and your electrical portion back into the cab while you're kind of fishing your lines down through at the same time.
All right, finish locking it into place. Then you'll push your dust boot up and over. We'll do, we'll finish that once we get it bolted inside the cab. So that's got our, our hydraulic line that goes to the slave center that's got that pointed down and your reservoir will be actually pointed up. Make sure that you don't have anything kinked and we'll probably be mounting our reservoir somewhere in this area right here as long as we can get to it to fill it in, in case we need to and it's not kinked up. So there's our master cylinder portion of what's outside the firewall. Now we're gonna do the slave cylinder side. On your slave cylinder, you'll have the plastic locking tabs that hold the, the push rod in. You don't cut these or break these. What will happen is when we attach this, the first time that we touch to the clutch pedal, that's gonna break these tabs and that's gonna disengage the, the push rod there. So, bolted to the side of the transmission. 213 metric nuts hold it on and you want your hydraulic line pointing up and that keeps it away from the uh, keeps it away from the front drive shaft here and what we'll do basically is we'll zip tie it up everywhere where it won't make contact with anything in rotation like the steering shaft and the drive shaft so I'm just going to kind of get a gauge on where I need to be there. That's where I, that's where I want it. It's right there because that's the only place where it doesn't. It's not kinked or anything like that. We zip tie it right to one of them brake lines and we got it. Now we're going to tighten up both the 15 metric bolts. There's one right above this and just to the right. We're going to tighten up both of these bolts and we're going to uh, rehook our electrical connection in for our neutral safety switch and then we're going to adjust our rod now when you're adjusting the pedal on your hydraulic assembly it's probably going to come the rod is actually going to come run all the way in i wish i had a little bit better shot on it because i've already adjusted it a little bit here but your rod will probably be run all the way to the back of the assembly. Now to adjust the rod you'll just loosen up this jam nut and then you can extend your travel or decrease your travel. So what I've got right here and I just kind of gauged it with by just mocking it up here looking at the, looking at the hydraulic assembly. What I've done is I've just kind of mocked it up here and I've got it to where it's just about even on travel right there where it's just about even on travel with my brake pedal. It's just about even with my brake pedal. That's gonna be my starting point from right there. So I may have to do some adjustment on it. I'll know more here in just a second, but what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna finish getting everything battened up inside here and then see where our adjustment's at. All right, we're gonna take you through the initial startup of the truck after you've installed your clutch. And what we look for when we first do an install to know if anything's wrong or anything of that nature so first off again like I was telling you when we were showing you a slave cylinder uh, when you first touch the pedal the first time that's actually what's going to break the locking tabs on the slave cylinder so before I ever start the truck I usually just push the clutch in one time now I'm looking for a smooth engagement right there anything rough normally will show up right off the bat when you first push the, push the clutch in so now we're going to go ahead and start the truck and what we're looking for when we first started and we release the clutch is we're looking for anything loud and kind of a clank or a bang or anything that just sounds out of the normal. Okay, so everything sounds good there. So we're gonna release the clutch real easy. Make sure we're good. That's basically it. So you can kind of tell, it's it's hard to, to hear it on the video, but you can kind of tell inside the cab here when we, we engage this clutch. Clutch is engaging about halfway down. That's good because that gives us a little bit of pedal travel there. So you've got, you've got a little bit of sound there, but not a ton of sound, nothing inside the cab that sounds in, abnormal or anything like that. 
Now we're gonna mount our hydraulic reservoir. Finished our install on our 2010 Dodge with our Belair uh, Street Dual Disc Clutch. A couple of things we were wanting to go over here. Uh, this is the mobile Delvac Synthetic Transmission Fluid 50 that we replaced in the transmission. Uh, it, it had already been done on this truck, but I wanted to get this bucket out so you could kind of see, uh, see the label on it and know what you were looking for uh, when you refill the transmission on this. Everything went smooth on our install. Uh, this is a good smooth clutch. Uh, now as far as your pedal pressure goes, it's going to be just a little bit stiffer than, than stock. Uh, but as far as engagement goes, it's going to be a real smooth engagement. But So you've got a little bit more aggressive pedal pressure inside the cab. Uh, one thing that I thought of that we didn't go over was your transmission. Before you put your transmission back in the truck, you want to check your input shaft for in flight. Uh, sometimes, uh, maybe if you've got a lot of slop in, in the transmission, you may have a mis misdiagnosis of the clutch altogether, the clutch being the problem, your problem could be in your transmission, maybe in a synchronizer or, or something of that nature. So before you reinstall your transmission, you always want to check the input shaft for in play, side to side, and in and out of the transmission before you reinstall the transmission. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let you hear the clutch, because this is a dual disc clutch. So it is going to have some sound to it when you have the clutch pedal release and the truck's in neutral. Now it's not going to be loud enough to where when you pull up to like a, uh, a fast food restaurant you've got to shut the truck off because it's too loud. But it does have a little bit of sound. So we want to make sure we show you that 